guys, Mr. Klein here with our first lesson in our chapter on simple machines. In this lesson, we will be talking about energy, work, power, efficiency, machines, a whole lot of stuff, but they're actually all interconnected and it's pretty easy to go over. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, whenever we talk about machines, we usually think of things like race cars and energy. We usually think of things like gasoline and motion and stuff like that. And you're not too far off from the truth, okay? I'm a big fan of Formula One racing and doing engineering, especially things like aerodynamics and stuff. That sort of information I studied in school, how the movement of air has to do with energy and stuff like that and how to make the energy work for you, okay? And so machines, which we'll get into later this lesson, are the epitome of having energy work for you. So... You're outside on a summer day mowing the grass. It's hot outside, but more importantly, you forgot to eat breakfast. Shame on you. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. You're halfway through mowing your lawn when your stomach starts growling. Well, why is it growling? Well, silly goose. It's because your body needs energy, just like your lawnmower that just happened to stop because it ran out of gas. Okay? Energy. Let's define energy scientifically. Energy what you need to keep your stomach from growling and also to keep the lawnmower going is the ability to do work or to cause change. Okay. Once again, energy is the ability to do work or cause change. It's the stuff that makes work happen or changes happen. Okay. Uh, going back to what we were talking about chemistry, chemical bonds and things like that are broken in order to release chemical energy. Now, when you use energy to move an object, we have another big important scientific fact we need to know, and that is what we call a force. Once again, when you use energy to move an object, that's a force, okay? So using energy to move an object is a force, not the force for all you Star Wars buffs out there. Okay, that's something different, and it doesn't have anything to do with midichlorians. So there's all kinds of energy that we will discuss this year, especially as we move forward in physics. But Right now, when we talk about machines, we're going to be talking about a specific type of force, and that is energy, rather. It's mechanical energy, or the energy that comes from moving objects. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start our graphic organizer. Okay, make sure you put six spaces and three columns. We're going to define two of them right here and right now. Energy, once again, is the ability to do work or cause change, and force is using energy to move an object. Now, energy and force don't have a formula, at least for what we're talking about. We're going to learn what the formulas are to represent energy and force later. Okay, so if you need to, you can go ahead and pause the video right now and make sure you get your graphic organizer started. Okay, so when you think about work, sometimes you think about bad days at work, and sometimes you just want to let out your frustrations and get things done, you know, in order to solve your problem about work. Well, the thing is, there's plenty of work going on in this video clip I have right here. It's just not exactly what you're thinking, okay? Usually when you think of work, you think about the job, okay? For example, I'm a teacher. Your parents might do whatever, okay? But what about running? Is running work? Well, in physics, running is definitely work, despite what you might think. In physics, work has a very specific definition. And so here's a definition for work. Work is the use of a force to move an object. Simply put, if an object doesn't move, no work is done, no matter how much energy or whatever is put into it. Okay, no matter how much he pushes on the door, the door isn't going to open. Now, we're going to ignore the door wobbling here for a second. No matter how much he pushes, because there is no movement, there is no motion, he's not doing any work. You can put as much force as you like, and if nothing moves, no work is done. Now, in order for a force to move an object, it needs to be applied in the same direction that the object moves. So, for instance, if you want to pick up an object, the force to make it to do the work needs to be in an upward motion. Now, we can express work mathematically. And so, remember, math is the science of language, and just like we did for speed and acceleration... Calculating the work, we can use a formula in order to figure it out. We can use the following formula. Work equals the force times the distance, or W equals F times D. And the answer with the work in the metric unit that we use is the joule, or capital J. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do a practice problem so you can figure this out. Todd pushed a 500 Newton box four meters across the floor. How much work did he do? 
Okay, we know that it's saying work, so we can go ahead and we can put in the formula. Work equals force times distance. The next thing we're going to do once we write down our formula, which by the way, was the problem with a lot of people who took the last test in this class, that they did not write the formula and their math was incorrect, we substitute. We substitute the force, 500 newtons, and the distance, which is 4 meters. We then multiply 500 times 4, and we get 2,000 joules. Okay, So the work done by Todd was 2,000 joules worth of work. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our graphic organizer. Work is using force to move an object, and we use the formula W equals F times D. So sometimes you want to do work faster. okay? And when you do work faster, obviously you get more work done. Well, sometimes you end up getting work made for you because you're not doing the work correct. But we're not talking about that. What we're talking about is doing work faster to get it done. After all, why cut the grass in your lawn with a pair of scissors when a riding lawnmower can do it faster? If you want to get work done faster, you need to increase the amount of work done in the time that you have. You do this by increasing the rate of work done. Power is the amount of work done in a given amount of time. Okay, Like work, power has a very simple formula to figure out. Here is the formula. Power equals work divided by time, or P equals W divided by T. You might be thinking to yourself, Mr. Klein, that's an awful lot like speed, where distance divided is divided by time. That's correct. Okay, Power is a rate, just like speed is. And the metric unit of power is the watt. Okay, or capital W, or one joule of work done per second. Okay, so a watt is one joule of work done per second. That's a metric unit of power. Let's go ahead and let's do a practice problem. You have an electric mixer that does 2,500 joules of work in five seconds. What is its power? Okay, so we take our formula. We know we're asking for power. We put in the formula. Work power equals work divided by time. We substitute work and time. Okay, power equals 2,500 joules divided by 5 seconds. We do the math, and the power is 500 watts. So that electric mixer did 500 watts, had 500 watts of power over the course of those 5 seconds. Now, let's go ahead and we're going to add this into our graphic organizer. Power is how much work is done in a period of time. And it's P equals W divided by T, or work divided by time. So... Whenever we think of machines, usually we think of big, complicated devices that do all sorts of amazing things, like make pretzels really, really fast. But machines can be much more complicated than a pretzel maker, rather, or something much simpler. In fact, like I said, you might think of a drill, a car, some piece of construction equipment, something like that. Now, why that is true, just like work, machine has a specific definition to physicists. In physics... A machine is any device that makes work easier by changing a force. Okay. In the next two lessons, we're going to be talking about simple machines. And we're going to talk about uh, how machines make work easier. So what we're going to do is we're just going to outline the way they make work easier right here. A machine can change a force in one of three ways. The first way is it can increase the force in or out. It can increase the distance of forces applied. And it could also change the direction of forces implied. So we'll talk about that with the uh, simple machines, and we'll talk about the differences in the way machines do one of these three things, or more than one. Now, it's important to know this, that the total amount of work does not change with a machine. The machine just makes sure the work is done easier than done by itself or otherwise. Okay? So a machine, once again, is a device it makes work easier by changing a force or a device that does work. Okay, so go ahead and you make sure you have this definition down. Machine, a device that does work. No formula because we're just describing something. Finally, you know, you have a lot of power and you can do work. Okay, we want to do work faster. And not only that, we want to get our work done quickly and also with not with as little effort as we can. Okay, so what we want to go in Make sure it comes out. Like this guy uh, doing a really good job of eating a corn cob. Well, like I said, the better a machine that can do the work, the better it is for us. So how do we know which machine is the best? Well, we measure how much work, like I said, the machine can do based on what we give it. 
and the percent of input work, the work we put into the machine that becomes output work is what we call efficiency, okay? Efficiency is the percent of input work that becomes output work. And just like uh, force and power, I'm sorry, work and power, we can use a mathematical equation in order to represent efficiency, okay? So you can determine efficiency using this formula. Efficiency is equal to the output work divided by the input work times 100%, or efficiency equals work divided by work, work being the output divided by the input times 100%, okay? So let's go ahead and let's do a sample problem. Logan puts 10,000 joules of work into a car jack. The car jack, in turn, puts out 7,000 joules of work to raise up the car. What is the efficiency of the jack, okay? So we know it's asking for efficiency, so we need the formula. Efficiency equals output work divided by input work times 100%. We substitute output work and input work, okay? We get 7,000 joules, that was the output, divided by 10,000 joules, that was the input, times 100%. We do the math. 7,000 divided by 10,000 gives us 0 0.70. 0 0.70 times 100% gives us the answer. The efficiency of the car jack is 70%. 70% efficient. Now, you might have noticed, Mr. Klein, how is that number less than 100%? Shouldn't if I put in 10,000 joules of work, I get 10,000 joules out? Well, here's the thing to know. A machine always does less work than what the user does to the machine. In other words, what you get out is never the same or more than what you put in. This is because the energy and in the input work gets to change into another type of energy, usually what we call friction. Friction is a type of heat energy because two objects rub together. And whenever we talk about Newton's laws, we'll talk about friction being an outside force. Okay, Most efficiency that is lost is turned into heat energy through friction because things rub together on a machine. So let's go ahead and let's uh, define this last thing, efficiency how well a machine does work, okay? Efficiency equals the output work divided by the input work, and you multiply that answer by 100%. So, there you go, that's the lesson. We talked about a whole lot of stuff, but if, as you noticed, it was all kind of common sense in things that we could easily identify with. We know that energy is the ability to do work or to cause change. And whenever you use energy to move an object, that's a force, okay? Scientifically speaking, when we talk about work, we're using a force to move an object, which we can represent by force times distance done. And remember, if there's no movement, there's no work done. If we want to know how much work is done in a period of time, we're looking for the power, and that is the work divided by the time. Now, a device that actually does work is called a machine, and oftentimes we want to see how well the machine does the work. We want to see how much output force it puts out in comparison to the amount of work we put in. And that's when we determine the efficiency or how well a machine does work. Remember, efficiency is the output work divided by the input work times 100%. So there you go. That's your lesson. Uh, we have two more lessons on simple machines. We'll divide the simple machines in half. We'll take on three each lesson. So there you go. That's your lesson. If you, as always, you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.